All right, team, Matty is back. We're going to do this every second week, I think is most likely. And firstly, we're going through his squad. He has made his trades for the week as well. Made a, what I see here is a little bit of a, a tough trade in last week. I think it'll work out long-term, but that of Ola Kuatu. Give us a little thought on the last couple of weeks. Yeah, hey, man. Um, so went a little bit wild last week. I was actually <laughs> tossing up between Carrigan and Ola Kuatu for most of the week. And just decided to go with the higher upside play and wasn't rewarded this week, but hopefully get rewarded in the future. So we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then trades this week, mate, what have you gone with? Uh, so this week, another big problem last week, I didn't bring in Galvin. So I had a pretty rough week last week. I uh, brought in Lusik and Ola Kawatu Oof. when... I just figured that both of them would score better than Galvin and uh, I would spend the spend the extra money to get more points and got um, had that blow up in my face a little bit. So this week, it's I have to get Galvin. That's priority. And then I feel like I have to right the ship because I've got a lot of high upside plays in my team. You've got like Ponga, May, Trevojevic, Ola Kawatu. And I just don't really have a stable point scorer anymore now that I've removed Haas and Cleary in the last two weeks. So I think I just needed to fix that up, right the ship a little bit, get a, a solid 60-point kind of scorer, and uh, I needed a good captain. So that's kind of where I've landed with the Carrigan and Galvin coming in. And I've taken out Chan. I could have taken out Tuapiki, Kotrick, Piakura. I just feel like Chan... He might come back off the bench and then he's going to get 20 minutes or and his PPM is pretty average. So I figured I'd just get rid of him now. At least two of Piki has a chance of coming back next week. If not, easy sell. Piakura, extra week of info. I don't really want to sell a 360K edge guy that mm. hopefully should average 40. And then Kotrick is such a good looper. So I'm sure I'll sell two of them next week, but... Just felt like Chan was the guy to go this week and Cleary, obviously. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like Bellamy saying that Chan unlikely to be back in that starting side. So, yeah, we can understand that. Maybe we're having a laugh beforehand that you were saying that, you know, overall team had a bit of a shocker, but um, your head to head team's coming 179th. So it's pretty funny how it works, isn't it? Yeah, it always works that way. It's the same like last week. I've been having an absolute terrible super coach season. Um, I think I was ranked 90,000 after the first two weeks. And then last week I had like a top 4% score that put me back in the top 30 K. So it's just funny how early days you shouldn't look at rank too much. Like my ranks 19,000 at the moment here, but if I gain 50 points, I think I go up into the top 8 K uh, or even, even higher. I think maybe top 6 K with 50 points. So yeah, I wouldn't be too stressed as long as you're in the top 50, 60 K you're all good. We've uh, got plenty of time to make back points. Yeah, 24 more rounds. And, mate, on a head-to-head -head basis, if you had Cleary, which most people do, is that a, a fair, very fair hold for Cleary and, and kind of you know get these cash cows and sort your team out around that and hold Cleary for, obviously, you know captaincy in likely round seven when he comes back? I think it depends. If you've built up a bank of wins already, then sure. Okay. Like if you're undefeated in your head-to-head -head comp, then you can afford to kind of, just save trades on Cleary. But I would say that if you're wanting, if you're really wanting to win the next three weeks, um, you're going to want to maximize, you know, players on the park. So, and maximize your points efficiency and things like that. So, yeah, I think it depends on where you're on, where you are on the table, but three weeks is probably too much. I would say, I would say just for, the price Cleary is at and depends on if you have like a Nico Hines as a second captaincy option or a Carrigan or someone, if you're needing to get that second captaincy option, then I would recommend selling Cleary even head to head. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just thinking about that. If you do have Hines with him, then that's going to be tough next week with Hines and, and Cleary out if that's the case. So maybe if you don't have any Sharks players and it's a pretty easy one to hold, given he's likely to be only Panther. That's probably where I'm at with the head-to-head -head side. And I think I'll be holding him in my head-to-head -head team at that. So 
Mate, that's your team. Let's go into a few of the purchases of the week so far. Just a quick, short and sharp. Obviously, Ola Kawatu. Would you still look to buy him this week if you didn't have him? I mean, I bought him last week and he was yeah. more expensive. So I'm obviously pretty high on Ola Kawatu. I just feel like he looks like he's going to be playing 80 on the regular this year, which, I mean, he did play last year for most of it. But... Um, he just looks like he's got that extra gear in him this year. Mm. And that's just really an eye test thing. Like the stats, it's kind of hard, a bit harder to make, make that out. But eye test wise, I think he just looks bigger, stronger this year. The last game against the Eels was a weird game. No one scored well. And uh, there wasn't much base stats. He didn't really get much ball. So I think you can easily just wait and see this week. Um, if it's anything like last week, then maybe he's not as good an option, but the first two weeks looked really good and he got um this year gave him good ball. So yeah. I would proceed with caution, but it's a nice upside pick this week against the Dragons. Yeah, I think it's still a good buy. Kype is Paul very clearly on my radar, mate, just to potentially save a little bit of money and has some upside, obviously, with scoring. A little bit risky at that. What are your thoughts around him? Um, I like him. I'm looking at bring him in in my head-to-head team okay. this week. Um it's just one of those things that it's a, it's a bit risky for sure, but high upside. I think the low side is he goes back to a 60-minute roll and maybe gets you, you know, 40-odd 40, 40 points kind of around where he's priced at. I don't really think that um, there's a huge downside from where he's currently priced. So, yeah, he's a good buy, I think, this week. Cool. Keep it simple with that. It's, um, yeah, just to have a, a game with bases and no attacking stats a base game at 61 with, you know, he's clearly going to have tackle breaks and offloads like an Olakawatu could as well. So yeah, an interesting one this week. So we've got a couple of wing fullback options, mate. Let's talk about Jaden Campbell and also Seb Chris around that similar price. who can cover center and wing fullback. If you do want to spend a little bit less, maybe if you're holding Cleary, Campbell and Chris are probably the buyers at this price. What are your thoughts on Campbell first? I think Campbell's a good buy. I think um, going on him this week is a little bit risky, but most people have to get a wing fullback in this week. So if going him this week means, you know, you, you like next week you wouldn't be able to go him at all, then I probably would go for him this week. His average is 45 when he plays fullback, I think, last yeah. year. Yeah. So it's priced at 33. I think it's a good buy. It's obviously not a uh, not without risk though. Um, you'd have to imagine that they wouldn't be playing him if he wasn't hundred percent, especially after such a long uh, injury. And he did play in the cup last week, so I think he's fine, but not without risk. Definitely. What are you, are you worried at all about how the Titans are playing? Do you think that affects him much, or does it not? Uh, I think <clears throat> Mark off the amateurs made a good point that. In the last few seasons, the Titans have been a bottom four team each of the last couple of seasons, and he's still done pretty well in fantasy. Yep. So I don't think it's a major problem. It's obviously not ideal, but Dolphins and Cowboys, Canberra, Manly, it's not like a super hard draw. And the Dolphins will really kind of get to know where they're at after this game, I think. Yeah. It looks like here, mate, if you look at all the scores in games, if they can keep in it, even if they're losing games, it's see or if they score a few points, he seems to go 40 plus. And the games that he does um seem to struggle a little bit with is when they get smashed a fair bit. So I suppose there might be games where he gets the 30 odd if they get hammered, but has upside if they if they're at least in games. And I suppose like this Dolphins one, they could definitely be in. Cowboys that might score a few points against. So definitely a, a solid pick, guys out there. Isaiah Yo, is he an easy switch for Cleary or would you go another way like you are yourself? I like Isaiah Yo. I just don't love the buy coming up in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, that's the only that's the only thing that I kind of steers me away from Isaiah Yo. Yeah. So Carrigan, cheap RB <clears throat> shouldn't score as well, but you get him all the way to 13. Is that the more the the win? Yeah, that's the logic. And Carrigan could easily match Yo if he gets continues to play 80 minutes, you never know. Yeah. And there's a 130 K price difference. So yeah, it might only be a few points. Hey, it might be like a 62 versus 
66 or something. Who knows? Uh, Ponga, you own him. Now that he's a lot cheaper, right? 60 odd K less. Is he becoming more and more of a buy to you? Yeah, I think he's a good buy this week. Obviously, you've got Turbo as well, which I'm sure we'll talk about for a similar price. So, Kalen Pong has got the goal kicking, and he's really not done a whole lot for his uh, 42 average so far. No. We saw the try assist last week, but but like besides that, he hasn't got a try or a try assist. So, there's going to be come, there's going to come a game soon where he gets 80 plus. And his average jumps back up to over 55. So it's just a matter of, do you want to get on this week or do you want to wait a week? Um, yeah. You could miss out, couldn't you? Him and Turbo, like I'm sitting here not ha- not owning both. And one week it's going to happen and I'll be annoyed. But um, it could, yeah, it could be in three weeks. But we don't know. Uh, that's, that's the worry. Uh, Cary Grant made him and Pap are on the sales list, unfortunately, in the, in the who's not um, percentages. I think Harry's like 1.7% sold. Pat was like just under one. Um, Flea holds both of them for you. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think Grant is probably going to be the best hooker in the game. Pap is on the upswing one price. I'm going to look to get in Grant potentially after the buy. So yeah, I definitely think holding on is the best strategy there. Awesome. Uh, Kulikefu, Benefuyaki there at three thirty one. He got the try last week, mate. Did. Did he excite you at all in terms of being a buy this week or is he a bit of a worry like he's for me? Yeah, he's a bit of a worry. I think if you've got him, great hold. You're stoked with the 40 and the try. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have him, you take that try out, you know, he's kind of looking around the mid-20s or something like that, which I don't think we need another Danny Levi, Joe Chan, mid-20s kind of scorer in our um, in our emergencies or interchange. So... Watch yes. and wait and watch. Like if he scores, he has a break even a three this week. So I guess it's kind of now or never a little bit. Mm. Uh, but even next week, if he scores well and starts to look like he's going to, because he did get the HIA last week. So we're not 100% sure on his minutes. Yeah. So he might come out with 65 this week and get 45 points or something like that. And then all of a sudden we are a little bit more interested next week. But yeah, for now, I think it's just like, if you want, you can go there, but there's better options, I think. The price is awkward. Hey, if it was like 270, you go, yep, that's fine. But um, 330, if it does go poorly, like you said, mid 20s, then another wasted spot in our team. Happy Coruscant, did you enjoy what you saw from him? And kind of, is he still a buy this heading into this week? Yeah, I, I um I have Appy and Super Coach and the head to head team. So okay. I'm, hed- I'm hedged out there, but yeah. he he's looking really good. Um, the way he just moves through the line, the way he break, breaks that tackle and offloads to Olim like right in front of Nico Hines. It's like, what are you doing, Nico? But <laughs> it he just kind of like burrows into the line and then kind of breaks through it. He's playing awesome. And if he did that with Gastro, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. The only thing I would suggest is... Are they missed tackles? Yeah, missed tackles are down and he does need... He's coming up against the Eels pack this week, which typically can run over some, I think Reed Marnie got 10 missed tackles against the Eels in, in round one. Yeah. So there's a lot of big boys that love to run over little hookers um, in the Eels. So I would, I wouldn't expect a 70 plus again. He needs attacking stats um, to do it, but I think he's kind of that got that safe-ish floor of 45 odd and then the upside to do what he did last week. Yeah, I still have. I just still have worries though of these twenties. There's a lot of twenties last year. With yeah, like but typically when, when he's come off early though. Yeah, and you think you think he, they're hopefully going to be in more close games this year, and potentially they're going to need his leadership down the stretch of the game. So it depends. If he, if he ends up getting spelled regularly, then he probably switches to definitely not being a buy. Mm. But if it's just a last week because he had gastro kind of thing, yeah, it's a it's a one off. Then yeah, so happy to wait a little bit. But obviously, with his break even at twenty three, you can't really wait too yeah. long. He has some value right now, and I think next week he could still have value. And if he punches out eighty minutes, then he's a much better buy next week. I think. Awesome. It feels like if you're if you're a believer in Appy, sweet. If not, like if you're a bit on the fence, just don't. Because yeah, you could pump out a thirty and you've 
like what Lassie did to us and got 28 and you've got the shit. So uh, Hammer, mate, 593, obviously a really big score last game. He played at 68, a pretty nice run with Tigers and uh, sorry, Titans and the Tigers the next two weeks. Do we see much of a change with him this year or is he going to be around sort of where he's priced out right now at 42? Yeah, I personally don't see him as much of a fantasy pickup. I think his game is more super coach friendly. He's um, getting a lot of tries without a lot of the tackle busts and like the accompanying stats that we that we need in NRL fantasy, like 68 with a hat trick isn't great for a fullback. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like a winger, a winger's knock. He gets he, he ends up getting like winger score lines where he'll yeah. get the tries and the line breaks, but he's not getting the offloads, tackle busts, kick meters, all these things that other ha- other gun fullbacks end up getting. So if you really like watching him, he has dual position. I think he's a an okay buy. Obviously, he's got a low break even this week, but I wouldn't pick him for a guy that's going to average over 50 this year. Yeah. It's actually interesting. There are a few fullbacks that kick, aren't they? You got Walsh, Drinkwater, Ponga, all kick in general play, which is um more than it used to be, that's for sure. All left mm-hmm. footers too, isn't it? Yeah. All left footers. Uh, Tohu Harris there, 752. Is he still good by after having a low week in round two, but 260 plus games and 80 minutes is what he's going to be on a week to week basis, it looks like? I wouldn't buy him myself, but I think he's a fine buy. It's just, do you trust the 80 minutes are going to continue? Mm-hmm. As soon as they drop down to 70 odd, he becomes not as good an option. He needs the 80 minutes to be really good just with his. Injury history as well. I think it's got a lot of managers a little bit cautious around bringing him in. But at the end of the day, if he ends up sticking at the minutes and doesn't get injured, he'll uh, more than outperform his price. So, yeah, that's fair. I'm happy either way. The big thing with him is obviously 20K or so cheaper than Carrigan, but it's the him not playing Origin is the real only difference. Um, and then, yeah, any worries about injury, I suppose, is the big one. Uh, Nico Hines, mate, is he an easy straight swap? From Cleary, or would you hold off? Uh, with the buy, I'd hold off. I held off last week with Haas. Yeah, fair. Just fair. because I felt like you had you would go, you were pushing all in on that Tigers matchup, and then if that didn't go well, then you've got the buy coming up, you know, in round five. And I think the people that went to Hines last week are regretting it slightly. Maybe not now that Cleary's out because they've yeah. got a good cap- <laughs> captaincy option and a, and a good half. But after last weekend, they were probably regretting it a bit. Yeah, he couldn't have played much worse, though, could he, unfortunately? Peter Kuru, we've got as a hold. And, mate, let's jump into a couple of teams that have been sent in from the pro group there. We had a nice score here to get a nice round rank in the 2000s there, but um, 7,997 is the overall rank. Used a couple of trades already. Do we think that this setup is pretty good? It's a 17-man squad that we've got here. Karaz, Raps, and May down below. This is the exact lineup of, of me. How good is that? Um, it looks like he's traded in Dylan Brown and popped him as captain. What do you think of that? We'll speak about Dill Braggs now, I suppose, as a as a buy this week. I mean, that's ballsy. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if they've watched any of the Eels games the the first few weeks, but I I don't look at Dylan Brown as a captaincy option. I know he's going to take more responsibility with Moses out of the team, but also Gutho takes a lot of that responsibility, and Gutho ends up putting in a lot of in play kicks. Gutho mm-hmm. might even play. Blaze is is typically a fullback, so Gutho and Blaze might swap mid game, uh, five eight and fullback potentially. There's there's a lot of unknowns I think in this team and the Tigers. We don't know, like they just smashed the Sharks. So before we would be like, oh, easy like fifty nil, not fifty nil, but you know, thirty six four or whatever, whatever it would be. Yeah. But I mean, this could get this game could go either way. I think two years ago, the Eels did lose to the Tigers uh, around, I think it was this same game, uh, by one point. So the Tigers will definitely be up for it. If we ignore... So I think Dylan Brown is a fine pick. I just wouldn't captain. I wouldn't put the captain would you, in the seal. That's fair. Who would you captain in this team then? Murray, I think. Or May. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, May's a funny one. How good's that? That he's become a captaincy option. So thanks for sending that one in. We'll go to the next one there. Just Jared, he's got some notes for us, which is cool as well. 
All right, we'll move us out of the way. So, Hooker, back of Hooker's last six should go pretty well against the Tigers. Looking at maybe downgrading Grant to Appy if he goes good this week. Whew. If you're holding uh, holding Grant, surely that's a a whole long term, isn't it? With Grant for one. Yeah, I wouldn't, especially for Grant to Appy is only like 80k. It's not like you're banking 200k or something like that. Yeah, he's worried about Murray. I think the he'll just. Hopefully, he'll just get through and he'll be okay. Obviously, a bit of a knee problem that's going to be there long term. He seems to have been playing with it already. Played with it at the back end of last year. He kind of he scored a couple of 80s at the back end of last year. So, we'll see on that one. Cotter's improved. Finifiaki is a bench player. Best. Need to trade. What? Need to trade Finna, Finna out eventually, I think he's saying. Looks like we're um, he's worried about a few of the players a bit early, unfortunately, before they even uh, are a problem. Went turbo over Teddy. He's not happy with Ponga. He reckons Ponga's cursed. What do you think of that? I don't think Ponga's cursed. I think it's <laughs> just been three weeks. We need to calm down. The team hasn't played well, has he? Have they? No, they haven't played well. If you, I feel like the odds on Ponga to not get a try in the first three games would be like crazy high if you were mm. betting at the start of the season. So I wouldn't stress about it. Yeah, for sure. But I suppose when he's talking about Kulikafu, it's more around his edge position. And that's why I'm potentially buying an edge this week is because this is pretty much my situation at Smithies and Salmon I've got in that spot. Um, and then no other edge uh, apart from Pekura or Chan. But again, they're not likely to play next week. So that's probably what he's thinking about. I do suggest looking for potential edge eventually. But at the moment, you've got your Finne who can do a job for you. But though the team looks pretty solid after those trades and and sitting there with 18 players. So come on, boy, stop complaining on this one, hey? <laughs> and then the last one out of the teams before we get into the rest of our players, smells like a meat pie, hey? He hasn't made any trades yet. He got 401k in the bank. So he's thinking to a piggy and Cleary to Turbo and Drinkwater. So the double fullback. We'll have a look at that in a sec. Drinky for the good run through buyers and origin. Turbo for the upside. I'd like Teddy, but a bit more expensive and he's outrun 13 and 14. I have oodles of cash. You sure do. All right. So at the moment, that those two being out, is he... Okay, two trades would make 17? Still, no, it'd be nice. one short. So I wouldn't get two wing fullbacks, okay. to be honest. If you're already going to be playing 16, That's I true. would get one, one wing fullback. He's got Galvin captain there. Cheeky. How good. Love it. Uh, so yeah, I'd probably get one wing fullback... Whoever you prefer, I'd, I'd probably get Turbo over Drinky, to be honest. Yep. But Agreed. And then, what is it? So, Edge position, a little bit of a worry. Yeah, Kai Pierce Paul. Another could, mid, maybe, as well. Could go for a gun mid, considering only has Hughes as backup. Oh, has Salmon yeah, and Tupanur as well. So, yeah, maybe the edge. Yeah, I mean, Kai Pierce Paul or Carrigan, I like either option, locking in. I guess you probably don't need an extra mid. Having four really good ones is not not the worst. So yeah, I think either getting Carrigan and locking up a mid spot or locking up one of the edge spots of the Kai Pierce Paul. That's the one good thing about having Olakwatu is he locks up one of those edge yeah. spots. Well, that's right. I'm looking at an edge. It could he could be one of them, but just I want to go a little bit cheaper. So that's where I'm playing that one. Pika, we've got. Do you have him as a hold? I don't mind what you do either way. Either way. Yeah. I'm going to hold him just because I can, but yeah. yeah. And you say Turbo Ponga as well over Teddy just because they're a bit cheaper, but what are your thoughts on Ted? Is he a good buy? I think he's a fine buy. I just priced at 53 already. There's mm. no value there. And obviously he's averaging quite high. He's got three tries in three games. Will that continue? Last year, he didn't get anywhere near a try game. So yeah. I feel like you'll probably regress, if anything, a little bit and mm. probably get around that 50 average, maybe where he's priced at, low 50s. So it's up to you whether you think that Panthers is a good entry this week. I just don't think it is. Yeah, that's right. He'll, he'll make some money, but um, good thing is the Roosters are playing better, way better than last year. Let's get into the Dolphins, mate. We got you and Aiken and, and Maxi Plath. There's a couple of guys on the list as well. And with Aiken, it's you know two games definitely. It seems like that, and then it just depends if Lemuelu gets back in this squad. He's got definitely got some upside on his price, and in a really tough center position that you know the, the Burbo Strange combo at the moment is he the savior? 
He could be. He very well could be. I just won't be around to take that gamble. I feel mm. like you don't want to be making lots of trades on centers. And if you get him in and then two weeks later, you have to trade him out because he's lost his spot or he's on the bench. Then that's just the, like the worst case scenario with center. You don't want to have to transfer them again. Once you trade them in. It does feel like if there were, we had no issues over the first like bunch of weeks and you hadn't made many trades and it's probably a gamble you could take, but not right now. Galvin must have the week, mate. Yeah. Get him. Yeah. Awesome. Carrigan, we've spoken about Plath there at 517. It just feels awkward to me, like why he's priced so high after two games from last year. Like if he anywhere in the 300s or 400, I think he's an easy buy, isn't he? Yeah. And, you, you know, he's priced at 37, break even at 27. We can wait a week, see where he's at. I mean, if he comes out and gets 60 minutes and looks really good, then maybe he's one to talk about next week. But yeah, not at this point. For sure. Any interest in Blaze Talungi, mate? 261, break even near zero. Nice score last week at center. Looks like he tackled pretty well also. Yeah, no, I think he's a good option. I would be getting him in if I didn't have the Gal. If I didn't have to get Galvin in already. So I so think... So he'd be the other cheap guy to pick? I think so, just because of the low break even. If he gets another 40, he pops off and he really starts to move that price and everyone's going to want to get him next week if he, if he gets the spot. But... And like this week isn't pivotal to get him. Yep. You can wait till next week and make sure he continues to have the role, etc. So yeah, happy to wait a week, especially because we don't really need centers this week. Everyone's got Stranger Burbo. Yep. Everyone should have a little bit extra um, cash available, I'd imagine too, to go a crap cheapie to him anyway. Uh, Seb Chris made a 397. We didn't end up talking about him. Do you still like him as a buy? He looked pretty good. And then the Raiders look much better, right? Than we may have thought at the start of the season. Yeah, I don't mind him. I He's just kind of going to be one of those like no frills centers. He'll score well some weeks and he won't score well some weeks. So compared to other centers, I think he's fine. In that same price bracket, You, I don't know if we're going to talk about him, but you do have Sivo coming back this week. Oh, yeah. Just didn't have him in there, so you mentioned him. So he's 30K more Sivo. And last year he came back off ACL. This year, he just had the first few games off with suspension. I think if you go back to 2022, he was averaging like 40 or... Yeah. Yeah, 40. So if he can get back there, he's got around 10 points of value. So... There you go. Yeah. A bit outside Those the things, box. Do you think uh, <laughs> he's going to score well against the Tigers this week? I think that's a, it's a good entry on Sebo this week. But yeah, definitely a risk. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mate, Fogs, this is a good week to buy. It's a nice downgrade. I'm thinking about it myself. Yeah, it was between him and Carrigan for me. I just felt more comfortable in the Carrigan captaincy. Yeah. But next week, I've got enough money in the bank that I can go straight to a Fogarty or a Dylan Brown or Sean Johnson or Cherry Evans or whoever is kind of looking like the value pick um, next week. So I think next week's a really good week to go shopping for halves. Just once we kind of work out, you know, what's happening with Cogger, Dylan Brown, there's SJ. There's like a few players that mm. are kind of coming down in price that, yeah. I think if you're going this week, definitely Fogarty, but there's more options next week. That makes sense. Uh, we spoke about Dylan Brown, solid by Tom Trebojevic, the full the wing fullback of the week, you'd say, coming up against Dragons. But he does have Penrith and Warriors the two weeks after. Yeah, but no buys till Origin, so... I think he's a good buy for sure. Penrith is at home. It's not as bad. He's got to explode soon, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. I'm a patient waiting as an owner. Yeah, exactly. I don't. And I'm hoping it stays away, except for um, I'll be captain him in Supercoach this week. Uh, Terrell, just buy him, right? Yep. SJ, look at him maybe next week, seeing if he gets goal kicking back too. Yep. Val Holmes, any thoughts on him or is it just a bit too much now? Him and Gagai just still scoring amazingly. Yeah, I mean, Holmes, I was looking at him when I was buying Tail and May in that round two. I just needed the dual position for this week. To that has helped. That. Yeah. Um, but he was like 20K more or something. He was like 650 or 660. <laughs> yeah. And he's just exploded. And that's what you get with Val. He's got a high base. He's got the 
goals and yeah. he's kicked, you know, seven goals twice in the last three games. So if the Cowboys keep putting scores on, he's going to keep getting a lot of points. But I think it's a bit too much now with yeah, how it's bright. Hard. Looking at him in super coach. Uh, Murray, not a buy, but a hold. Yeah, hold him if you got him. I think he's one of those tough captaincy options, but mm. if you trust that he's not injured, he would be a good captaincy option. Yeah. If you don't have any anyone else, like any Hines or Carrigan or anyone. For sure. Uh, Robson, mate, is he more in that just the whole category, not likely a buy? Like, would you go Appy over him? I don't know. It just feels a bit off. It's been annoying being a grant. I know that he's just coming out getting three try assists and a line break here and just getting enough <laughs> to get the 50-odd score, hey? Yeah, where was this last year? Um, it was at the start of the year, to be fair. Yeah, where was this in the back 20 rounds? Yeah, you had anyway, it way too I, long. I think, <laughs> I think he's a great hold. I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't sell. Cool, yeah. Up in his 700k now. Uh, Hopgood, mate. I feel like he's just going to explode again one of these games. It seems to be, what, high 40s and then a big one with the try or big tackle numbers and the like. But they're a team that's just so free-flowing attack-wise. He doesn't have to get in that grind as much, does he? Yeah, no, I think as well with just the makeup of the bench and how things are constantly changing at the eels with minutes and people going down. Like the first few games, there's been someone that's gone down every week, maybe not last week. Well, that the Moses groin issue, but he played on, I suppose. But Cardi yeah. went off last week. Yeah, there's, there's just been there's been Simonson, there's been Tolongi, there's been like various chopping and changing going on with the minutes there. So I, I think he's a wait and see. Just I hold. want to see what those minutes are. I think he's a hold. If you got him, I wouldn't be buying if I didn't have him. Yeah. And then we've got Adam Fennel Blake. Same situation there. Probably not a buy. He did come off with a little bit of an issue last week, but just a hold. Yeah. You're not loving the 54 with a try last week. Um, yeah, 48 so minutes. <laughs> priced at 59. So he's needing to basically score a try a game at that, at that rate. But Big run meters. He'll he'll do he'll do this and he'll have like an eighty game again in a few weeks and he'll have a forty game probably coming up soon. So you just ride yeah. the wave, hold him. Yeah, for sure. He's so good, isn't he? Uh, then we've got Latrell at all the captaincy options in here as well. So he's just a hold this week. Or could you even buy him? Or is it just a bit of a worry with how they're playing? Like he could go nuts against dogs, but there's better options and he has a buy in three weeks. I think. Yeah, that's right. Round seven. And then Isaac Tongo as well. Like he's had two massive weeks in a row with Cleary out. Is that a red flag now? Yeah, with Cleary out, hopefully Taylor Mays, it's his time to shine in the Please. next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so fingers crossed, Luai gets a lot of ball and uh, a lot of short balls to Taylor May in space. And he's just going to rampage down the left-hand side. He hasn't, give since, since we bought, like that first week, he had the ball early. And then could just do his thing one-on-one. And then the last two weeks, he's not had the ball once. He's only ran the ball out of trouble, like straight into three defenders. So, yeah, please. Been very, it's not been not been a great watch. It's just like he's me been, watching Olufatsu last week. He just yeah. never got the ball in space. I'm like, come on, man. He's been as good as by as... Um, he's probably averaging the same as what you got Robson with last year, 31 in the last two weeks. Yeah, it's not been not been great. McInnes, I sold McInnes and... Uh, now it looks like he's going to get a million minutes this week, so that's good. actually. I didn't speak about him. Is is he a cap? Is he a good captaincy option this week? I don't know if I trust him enough to. Cap- I, I mean, I think I do, depending on what your team makeup is. I probably captain him over Murray. Maybe that's pretty close. Yeah, that's fair. Just just with the bench they've got, but yeah, if he can get sixty five minutes or so, he's definitely a captaincy option. He, his PPM wasn't quite as good last week. No. He missed only two tackles. He got four tackle busts. So, yeah, and we'll there see. There are two I, penalties. So, yeah. He could easily be a trade. I wouldn't be trading him in because he could easily be a trade out around the buy yeah. if you need money. But at the same time, you know what you're going to get with the Kinnis. He's going to give you a high work rate. It's not going to be a cap. It's similar to Carrigan You can just or Murray. You can just kind of like, you just know that he's going to get tackle every now and then, like every few minutes, and he's going to rack up the points and he'll be on 25 at halftime. He's just going to bait people into holding him long term. He'll get like 60 this week and then everyone's mm-hmm. like, yep, yeah, hold. And then like everyone comes back and the bunnies or the Cowboys match up and he goes back to like 48 minutes. It's going to be 
it's gonna be a fun ride but um thanks matt so much for for coming on to this one i appreciate your thoughts and uh yeah i know everyone did last time as well except for that one bloke that was pretty funny hey <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one bloke isn't there all right thanks man appreciate you having me on yeah, man have a good day